The Bulldog has a precarious place in Halo Infinite's sandbox. Search Google or any other forum and you'll notice the underwhelmed response from the community. You don't have to look far to see why. It has a small magazine, brief ammo reserves, shorter than expected range, a slow rate of fire, and it's not very lethal, even at close range. It's just not a worthy successor to the close quarters boomstick Halo fans have come to love over seven games with a more than 20 year legacy. The Bulldog is in such poor condition that it fails to do anything better than every other gun in the game. The Forerunner Heatwave is in fact just a better version of the Bulldog. It has a faster rate of fire, still kills in two perfect hits, and does so over greater ranges. It has more ammo, it shares the same weapon racks as the Bulldog, and it can one-tap, one-slap. Perhaps the Bulldog is easier to use, but that just isn't enough. But the Bulldog's stiffest competition comes from the highly competent Assault Rifle. On this channel, I talk a lot about Halo Infinite changes player movement and momentum how changing direction is too easily accomplished in Infinite. Because of this, it can't be understated how effective simply backing away from a Bulldog user is. Once a player has accurately read the situation, they can simply backpedal and spray you down with the starting weapon while you fail to close the gap in time. The shotgun was always sort of an ambush weapon, but when you remove the capability to kill a player instantly, you neuter the weapon past a point where it's no longer viable in the sandbox. The Bulldog is robbed of any niche. It's billed to us as a close quarters weapon, but it's so many other guns just outperform it in every way. In the end, the Bulldog fails to justify its place in Halo Infinite. Despite these dire straits, I actually think the Bulldog has a lot going for it, and that it could still be something great. You guys remember the Halo Reach grenade launcher, right? It's a weapon fondly remembered by the community because of how it mixed power, utility, and function. It could potentially kill a player in one hit under very specific conditions, serve as an anti-vehicle weapon, and support your team with an AoE EMP effect. It was in addition to Halo's sandbox that expanded player expression, giving tools that could be used to any result the player could successfully pull off. It's a weapon that must return to Halo Infinite as soon as possible because of how it both brought functionality and lethality. But how does this relate to the Bulldog, a weapon that's supposed to be a shotgun for which its lethality is its functionality? Simple. The grenade launcher was also something else. A few other members of the community have spoken at length on the topic of sandbox overlap. The Halo Reach grenade launcher was almost nothing more than an exercise in sandbox redundancy. It's a topic of debate whether or not the sandbox overlap or redundancy is good for Halo, and I personally think that it is. Halo Infinite has arguably the least amount of overlap since combat evolved, and see how it's suffered for it. The Bulldog cannot replace the shotgun because it's not the shotgun. You see, when there is a nominal amount of sandbox overlap, each weapon has supreme power over its respective domain, a monopoly if you will, with no competition. When each weapon is its own monopoly and there is no sandbox overlap like we have in Halo Infinite, weapons that face competition immediately fall into a hierarchy of prestige, with the most prestigious weapons being dubbed power weapons. The Bulldog is not a power weapon, it has lost this competition, superseded by weapons that more effectively fill its role. This power hierarchy of weapons is something that the Halo series has always endorsed, with the most powerful weapons being placed in particular places in Halo's maps. If you're fighting your friends in Halo Reach Forge, where you can give yourself any weapon you please, do you choose an assault rifle? Magnum? No. You always go for the most prestigious weapons. This means snipers, rocket launchers, and sometimes shotguns if the map is close enough. Despite this design, there is still place for lesser weapons. What is the sniper but an idealized version of the DMR? No, sandbox overlap and power hierarchy are good for Halo because it allows unique situations and combinations to arise from player choice as they make decisions based on the availability of prestigious power weapons. It's first person shooter economics. Do you see where I'm going with this? Because Halo's weapons are deliberately made to scale in power with the presence of sandbox redundancy, multiple weapons of the same function can exist alongside one another. The Halo Reach grenade launcher is a loadout equivalent of a rocket launcher, a way to lean into the spirit or function of a high explosive projectile weapon without necessarily bestowing the match swaying power of the real rocket launcher. The presence of weaker, more readily available weapons actually benefits the most powerful weapons in turn as well, because those most ideal power weapons now share in the responsibility of representing certain roles. You might not realize that the Halo Reach rocket launcher is one of the most powerful power weapons that you can get in all of Halo certainly the most powerful iteration of the Spanker. 
because Halo Reach has so many different weapons that all represent the role of high explosive projectile launcher, the Spanker is now at liberty to be balanced as a full fat power weapon, while the grenade launcher is more of a diet version that you can spawn with. See? Power hierarchy. Now you see what the Bulldog should be. It's the AA-12 and 2556. It's Halo's rapid fire running gun CQB loadout weapon. It's the gun that leans into the spirit of the shotgun without actually bestowing the same degree of power. If loadouts are ever introduced into Halo Infinite through new game modes or firefight, the Bulldog is something you should be able to spawn with, equal in prestige to the assault rifle or battle rifle. So why then does 343 sabotage this honestly exciting and unique addition to the Halo sandbox? Even in its current state, the Bulldog is weak, yet it's treated as a middle of the map weapon alongside the Heat Wave, something to be aspired to and fought over. In my opinion, if every weapon rack featuring the Pulse Carbine or the Commando were replaced by the Bulldog, I prefer it. But not as much as I'd like a total rework. The AA-12 in Halo is honestly an awesome idea that the Bulldog does not fulfill. It has a drum mag, yet only 7 rounds in the magazine, with a pathetic 14 in reserve. The scarce animal economy would suggest that 343 doesn't know whether they want the Bulldog to be a loadout weapon or a power weapon. Its controls are fully automatic, but the animation suggests pump action, and its rate of fire is pitiful. Its range is consistent, but short. It's too powerful to be a loadout type weapon, but not powerful enough to be a power weapon. The Bulldog seriously needs to pick a lane, and here's the one I'm rooting for. Make the Bulldog a true automatic. This means reworking the animation and model. Give it a rate of fire similar, or rather a lot lower than the commando. Nerf its damage. At point blank, let it kill a Spartan, or an elite in PvE, in 3 or 4 shells. Massively buff its ammo economy. 16 shells in a drum, 32 to 80 in reserve. This would give the Bulldog a high kill per reload rate, which would let the Bulldog stand out. Picture wiping the entire enemy team or going on a rampage in PvE campaign or even firefight. It's the perfect dogfighting weapon. Give it a damage drop off consistent and steady so that it drops off to assault rifle TTK levels past a few meters. Give it a ton of recoil. So yeah, basically turn it into an AA-12. Whereas you trade your assault rifle for the battle rifle to get more range, the Bulldog would take away range and consistency in favor of more close quarters lethality, though it wouldn't be a power weapon. Though of course, the Bulldog is not a suitable replacement for a high risk, high reward pump action shotgun. The Halo community is unanimous in its opinion. The close quarters insta-kill boomstick must return. And because it now shares a role with the Bulldog, the classic shotgun would need to lean more heavily into its status as a power weapon. No more Halo 3 or Reach useless outside of COVID distance, pellet stop existing past 10 feet bullcrap. No we would be able to see a return to form. A shotgun that has real performance akin to the Combat Evolve shotgun. Just as the Halo Reach grenade launcher allows the full-size spanker to shine, so must the returning shotgun be empowered by the Bulldog. Where the Bulldog is more of a tier two CQB loadout weapon, the real shotgun is an actual power weapon worthy of being placed in the middle of the map. And there you have it. The Bulldog doesn't suck, it's just lonely. As always, I deeply appreciate your viewership, and a warm thank you to my returning subscribers, for which I have a question. This video, and the first one I made on Aim Assist, were both scripted videos. I actually typed up a script, and spoke into a microphone, and put some footage over to it on my video editing software. Whereas every other video on this channel was a off-the-cuff, no-script video where I just fired from the hip, got in front of a microphone, and started talking. So, I want to ask you, should I just film my videos from the hip, or should I write a script for each and every one? I'm fine either way. Thank you very much. And please, if you've not already done so, like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can be notified whenever I upload new content. Thank you.